It's about time you tell us who did it. You take care of your job and I'll take care of mine. I sure will. But don't pay to be lucky in this town. your turn to fry. What's the beef? He doesn't like the way you're playing up this crime wave, and he thinks you're riding Rafferty too hard. Oh, uh, that's the trouble with Pete Rafferty. He gets fat-headed when nobody's riding him. I wish Michael Shane hadn't moved to San Francisco. Yes, Mr. Bronson. Uh, he just came in. Yes, sir. Go on in, Timothy Rock, and get your spanking. We'll see who spanks who. All right, let's have it fast. I got a story to write. I've just had a call from Detective Chief Rafferty. That's my story. You're a competent reporter, Tim, when you stick to reporting, but I don't like this sensational stuff you've been writing. Are you afraid of the truth? Not at all, but we have a regular staff to write the editorials. I've had complaints from the Chamber of Commerce, the Better Business Bureau, and other civic organizations. The wire services are picking up your stuff and featuring it throughout the country. They're giving the city a bad name, frightening people away. Well, we mustn't hurt business. No, it's better let the gambling syndicate take over and move in their hoodlums. We've always had more or less gambling. Now it's more. Look, there's big money back of Brenner, and they swing a lot of political weight. The public has got to be jarred awake and made to realize what it's up against. Rourke, bear in mind that I am the managing editor, and I will decide upon the policy of this paper. All right, have it your own way. Now let me give you a tip. About what? Malicious in the third race at Jamaica. And if you're going to fire me, I want two weeks' notice. How was it? Not so hot. I've got a hunch I won't be around here very long. You'll we'll never be a sweetheart. Will you get this wire off to Michael Shane for me? Of course. And look, save the water ads for me. Come in here a minute. That's not the story I okayed. How did it get in the paper? Well, I don't know, sir. Rock faked a story from I OK and then sneaked this in somehow. The addition got on the street before I caught it. Make out a closing check for Rock and I'll take it to him. I don't even want him coming in here after it. Yes, sir. Uh, will that be all? Clean out his desk and bring everything in here to me. Yes, sir.
Taboo. Sick looking light. Lipstick. But she was a blonde. Come in. Why should you be the exception? You've been hurt. Did Walter do that to you? What makes you think Bronson did this? He was furious about that story you slipped past him this afternoon. The first edition was on the street before he caught it. So to help matters along, you come up here. Walter Bronson found his wife in my apartment. He'd blow his top. He doesn't know where you live. You can find out easy enough at the office. How did this happen? A guy named Brenner didn't like my story. The head of the gambling syndicate? So he sent a couple of his hoodlums along to deliver his criticism. Did they tear up the apartment? No. I think this was done by a cute blonde looking for some affidavits. You better run along. Tim, why don't you be nice to me? You seem to overlook one little minor detail. You have a husband. I don't like Walter Bronson. I think he's a stuffed shirt. But I'm not fooling around with his wife. Maybe you'll change your mind. After what you've been through, you need a nurse. They say the patient often falls in love with the nurse. Hey, what do you got in here, an anvil? Are you gunning for anybody in particular? Don't be absurd. That's Walter's pistol. What's it doing in your purse? Well, if you must know, I was afraid he might try to kill you. He frightened me with his raving. I've never seen him so angry before. I knew where he kept his gun, so I slipped it in my purse. Make yourself comfortable. I'll get some water. Thirty-two automatic. There have been three murders committed with a thirty-two automatic. That isn't the only thirty-two automatic in the world. No, and you're not the only blonde in the world either. I wish I were, to you. Relax, I'll bathe your face. Never mind, I'm all right. Look, why don't you give up this one-man crusade? It can't get you anything but trouble. You know, Walter can make things tough for you. Don't worry about me. I'll get along. Does Walter know you've been dropping all that money in those gambling joints? What's that got to do with what I'm talking about? Plenty. Well, telegram for Mr. Shane. Oh, I beg your pardon. I thought you were Mr. Shane. Very funny. Your sense of humor shouldn't happen to a comedian. You two have habits in common. Whenever I see a peanut, I think of Mike Shane. That's yeah, from Tim. Crime wave rampant. <laughs> Why did Tim love to use two-bit words? Three murders and more expected. Jump on your white horse and come to the rescue. Urgent, Tim. Stay a wire, Phil. Very happy where I am. Tired of picking bullets out of my teeth. Want no part of any crime wave. Yes, sir. And should I put fresh violets on your desk every morning? You'd better get to work, Miss Hamilton, and stop insulting your boss. Yes, sir. Hey, Phil. Crusading reporter near death. Timothy Rourke desperately wounded. Oh, Mike, how terrible. Shot by an unknown assassin. Has not yet regained consciousness. Get some plane reservations. Who says so? Chief Detective Pete Rafferty. Who are you? Mike Shane. And Tim Rock's my best friend. I'm going in to see him. Come on, Angel. Are you close relatives? Oh, I'm his best friend. How's he doing? We're not supposed to discuss our cases, but he has a fighting chance. Mm. 
Mike, who do you suppose would want to put Tim out of the way? I got a pretty good idea. We're going to find out for sure. Uh, let me know when he regains consciousness, will you? You can reach me through Will Gentry, Chief of Police. Your name? Michael Shane. When he wakes up, just tell him I've come. He'll understand. Here comes what is known as a local anesthetic. The police are handling this case, and we haven't asked for any outside help. I don't feel like fighting with you, Rafferty. All I want is the person responsible for that. So does everyone. What do you suppose the detective bureau's for? I've often wondered. Please, you must be quiet. Yeah, okay, okay. Now listen, Shane, keep out from under my feet. And when I have a man in protective custody, nobody crashes in. You should be grateful that Mike is here to solve another case for you. Oh. Now, look, you drive by the courier office and see what gossip you can pick up. Minerva Higgins knows everything that goes on, and she's always had a soft spot in her heart for Tim. Where are you going? I'm going to drop by Tim's apartment. You meet me there. Mr. Bronson isn't in. That's good. Mike Shane asked me to see you. Oh, is Mike back in town? He came as soon as he heard about Tim. Poor Timothy. I feel terrible about that. He was playing with dynamite, and I warned him he'd get himself into trouble. Mr. Bronson gave him definite orders that day to stop his sensational crusade. Did he? No. He sneaked in a final blast at the gambling syndicate. He knew it would be his last story, and he went all out, naming names and everything. Uh, this is the story that started the explosion. Could I keep this and show it to Mike? Certainly. Um, there's something I wouldn't tell anyone else. Yes? Mrs. Bronson is carrying a torch for Timothy. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. I don't like to gossip, but a woman is a fool who looks at a man the way she looks at Timothy and expects another woman not to notice it. She drapes herself all over his desk, and he tried not to pay any attention, uh, except to be courteous. But she is a beautiful blonde, you know. <laughs> This guy, Rourke. Maybe. Maybe you came to find some affidavits he had hit out. Could be. Some people are looking for those affidavits. Hand them over. Who am I dealing with? Never mind about that. <laughs> Given him more time. Maybe he'll feel talkative when he wakes up. What's going on here? Help! Help! Police! Help! Police! Hey, Monk, we better scram. Mike Shane, can't I leave you for an hour without you getting yourself beaten up? Seems like old times. I guess I was getting soft. Are you hurt? No, no, just my vanity. A couple of pals were looking for some affidavits they thought Tim had. Say, hey, listen, Mike Shane, if you get yourself a cauliflower ear, I'm going to leave you flat. I stopped in to see Gentry on the way over. He said Tim took a terrific beating. They found the fingerprints of two women here in the apartment. 
One of them had ransacked the place, and the other one had a drink with Tim. Minerva says Mrs. Bronson was carrying a torch for Tim. Huh? Something to think about. Tim had a row with Bronson, and this is the story that caused the blow-up. Tim should have known they'd start gunning for him when he named names and said he had affidavits. That guy Brenner wouldn't be too happy about that. What's going on here? Who are you? I'm Mr. Henty, superintendent of this apartment building. Fine. You're just the man I want to see. But who are you? Detective. Did you see any strange women around here the night Rourke was shot? I saw one, and what a blonde. She came in the side entrance. Would you recognize her again? Oh, I only saw her back, but uh, I think I'd recognize her. Why do women bother to make up their faces? Oh, no. Not you again. Hello, Pete. Why the call for the riot squad? I had a little misunderstanding with a couple of gentlemen. Didn't amount to anything. Come on, chain spirit. Who were the guys and what was the argument? And if you're withholding any evidence on me, I'm going to make you sweat. You said you didn't want any outside help. Get your own evidence. Besides, Rourke sent for me to make a confidential investigation. Someday you're going to go too far, Shane. And you're going to stick out your neck, and I'm going to jump on it with both feet. He doesn't seem to like you. I'll bet you think we're bitter enemies, don't you? Aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> no, we kid around like that all the time. Doesn't mean a thing. Now, look, you're going to be very valuable to me, and I'm going to want to talk to you later on. I'll see you later. Someone really took this place apart. I think I'll drop in and have a cup of tea with that guy Brenner. Mike, can't you be satisfied with one beating a day? You stay here till I get back, and don't open the door to anyone. Angel, can you do something for me? Yes, Mike, what? Uh, clean the place up a little, will you? Yes. Hey, bud, what's going on here? I want to see Brenner. Brenner? <laughs> you got an apartment? Do you need an apartment? Certainly, certainly. Go on, beat it, scram, get gone. Go ahead, get out of here. Oh. Brenner? I didn't hear you knock. I didn't knock. Let's get down to cases. You're Brenner and I'm Shane. I want the blonde who blasted Tim Rourke. And if not? I'll bust a lot of things wide open. I don't know who it was. Wish I did. Whoever it was put the heat on me plenty. I can't even open for business until things quiet down. I had no reason to have Rourke rubbed out. I just made a deal with him that afternoon, in this office. You're lying. Tim never sold out in his life. I read the story. The guy's a heavy winner at your club, and the blonde knocks him off. I want that blonde. I don't know who she is. I can't know about every blonde who makes a midnight pickup. If Tim could dig up that stuff, you ought to know what goes on in your club. I'm laying it on the line, Brenner. I want that blonde. Anyone who stands in my way is going to get hurt. No. The affidavit collectors. Of course, they're not working for you. Or would you fool me and tell me the truth? Frisk him. Back your monkeys off me. All right, boys. Back up. How come Bug Eye let him in? Bug Eye is now Shut Eye. He's a sucker for a left. I suppose your understanding with Rourke was to have these two gorillas beat him up. All right, they'll pay for that. And if you had him blasted, you'll burn. Don't stick your nose outside this door unless you want to get it shot off. Hey, he can be plenty tough. Yeah, we've taken care of tough guys before. Thanks, bud. You're welcome.
Who's there? Open the door. I know it's Mike. Hi, beautiful. Hey, wait a minute. What? No black eye? <laughs> that was a day off with the strong arm boys. They only work five days a week now, you know. Union regulations. Anything happen while I was gone? Well, yes and no. What do you mean, yes and no? No one tried to beat me up, but I was down in the lobby and I noticed a letter in Tim's box. Mr. Hendy wasn't around, so I swiped it. Postmark the afternoon of the day Tim was shot. Smell it. Hmm, perfume. Wonder if she was blonde. Look here, young man. I'm responsible for things around here, and I don't like the way you're making free with Mr. Rourke's apartment. Well, investigation takes time. But you can't take the place over. And besides, I'm quite sure that there was a letter from Mr. Rourke down in the lobby, and it's missing. Missing? Yes. That's fine. What kind of a place is this? Don't you realize that letter may have been of vital importance? It might have been the very clue that would have solved the entire crime. And you let some crook sneak in and steal it. Well, I don't know what's liable to happen to you. You might even be charged with criminal negligence. Well, I can't be every place. It's too much for one man. And I can't be down in the lobby all the time. All right. I'm going to overlook it for the time being. We'll see what develops. Thank you very much. It's all right. I'd like to give everyone a break. You know, there may be some information in this letter that would give us a lead. If Tim could talk, I know he'd give me permission to open it. Of course he would. If there's nothing in it that has anything to do with the case, you can forget you saw it. Yeah. yeah no signature. If you're interested in buying some information for your paper, call Capital 8024. Information is what we're interested in. Office. Capital 8024. This may be the break we've been waiting for. Capital 8024 doesn't answer. All right, got me information. Hello, information? Police business. Give me the name and address of Capital 8024. Yeah? Thanks. Madge Rankin, 614 Hillside Drive. I think I'll pay her a little visit. I don't mind going along. Yeah, well, uh, frankly, Angel, I think I get along better by myself. That's what I'm afraid of. Oh, Angel, this is strictly business, believe me. Oh, I believe you. <laughs> No use wearing yourself out on that doorbell. Madge isn't home. She had a noisy party Tuesday night. I haven't seen her since. That's funny. I had a date with her. Maybe she forgot. I don't think so. She told me she'd be here. You can wait in my place if you like. Oh, thanks. That's very nice of you, but I'll, I'll wait outside. Okay.
Come in. Well, you changed your mind, but fast. Your friend Madge has been murdered. Madge? Murdered? Look, I'm Mike Shane, a private investigator. The cops are going to be boiling in here any minute. You could be a big help to me. Why should I? Why not? It doesn't cost you anything, and you might help me solve a murder. I wonder why Shane asked information for this address. If Henry gave me a bad tip, I'll shake his teeth out. Holy smoke. It... Hey, we run into a murder. Now, don't touch anything until I get the boys over here. I'll phone from next door. Tom, you watch the front and you go around the back, huh? Yeah. Police business, I'd like to use your phone. Sorry, we don't have one. Oh, thank you. Mike Shane, I might have known it. Mike, tell him to go away. We don't want any. Well, talk like that, honey. He's a big shot detective. Now, don't give me that. What do you know about this murder next door? Murder? What murder? Do you know who lives next door? Well, of course, Madge Rankin. Oh. We're good friends. Oh. Take her in to look at the body for identification. Well, tell me what's happened. As if you don't know. Go on along with him. Must I, Mike? Sure, that's Pete Rafferty. You have to mind him. All right, lady. All right, Shane, start talking. What do we talk about? Business, or shall we make it personal? That's not funny. We'll talk about that murder next door. Well, I just got in town this afternoon. Do you think I murdered her by radar? Now, you know something. You ask information for that address. Oh, sure. Uh, Helen doesn't have a phone, so she gave me the number next door. Nobody answered when I called, and I'd forgotten the address. Oh, it was just a coincidence. You just happened to pop up next door to a corpse. You know, Pete, it's the funniest thing. Whenever anybody has a corpse they don't know what to do with, they always dump it in my lap. Oh! Oh! Call over the car radio for a homicide detail. Right. Well, was it Madge Rankin? Yes, it mm. was Madge. I never saw a dead person before. Gave me the creeps. Take it easy. Poor Madge, lying there dead all that time. And I thought she was out having a good time. Well, I'll talk to you again. Just stay put so I can find you. Well, Shane, where's that letter you took out of Rourke's mailbox? Well, Peter, how can you say such things? Hendy said you stole a letter just before you made that call. Did anybody see me steal a letter? Well, any evidence is missing, and you're around, I know who's got it. That is merely supposition on the part of the witness, and has no weight as evidence.
What do you want? Oh, I, I was looking for a friend. Man or a woman? A man. Maybe he's in there. Come on. Chief, here's a dame who was snooping around next door. How does she know where you were? You always tell her before you go to visit another girlfriend? You know how women are. They follow you around, spy on you. Mike Shane. Sometimes they talk too much. Oh, shut up. What were you going to say? Who, me? Oh, I had nothing to say. When Mike and I promised to look you up, we had no idea we would interrupt a police convention. There was a murder next door. How awful. Oh, don't give me any more of that run around. I want what evidence you have, or I'll hold you on suspicion of obstructing justice. And maybe a federal rap for intercepting mail. Look, you had three murders and Tim was almost killed before I came. What did you do about it? You wouldn't know a piece of evidence if it walked up and introduced itself. All right. All right. Come on down to headquarters. Perhaps I can persuade you to sing a different tune. Mike. Oh, it's all right, honey. Take it easy. Can't hold me long on suspicion and you'll enjoy hearing him apologize. Me apologize? Why, you... Now, Pete, Pete, careful, careful. Ladies, uh, no naughty words. Come on. Have the boys stick around while I get back. I'm taking this bird down to headquarters for an audition. Okay, Chief. All right, boys, come on. Did Mac Shane get all the information he wanted? If there's anything else he wants, he knows the address. Say, listen, sister, if you have any ideas about Mr. Shane, you can forget them right now. Who are you? His mother. Mother! Don't you mother me or I'll rock you to sleep. You can't talk to me like that. I'll have you know I'm a lady. Really? More cops, I suppose. I'll be combing cops out of my hair for a week. Oh, hello, Dilly. I was driving by and saw the police guards outside. What happened? Madge was murdered. Good heavens, when? Well, it... Police, did you know her? Well, yes, I knew her in a casual sort of a way. Do you know anyone who might have had a reason to knock her off? Well, of course not. I told you I didn't know her very well. What's your name? Dillingham Smith, but I tell the you address? I... address? El Montavo Apartments. Are you married? Uh, yes, but my wife's out of town. Where is she? Oh, I don't know. We had a little misunderstanding. You can't pry into my private affairs. Well, if you'd rather talk down to police headquarters, it's okay with me. All right. I know nothing about the murder. But go ahead. Have fun. All right. Come on. Boys, might as well go on to bed. I don't feel talkative tonight. Did you finish the routine investigation of the murder? Why don't you get wise, Shane? The police department's much bigger than you are. Was the victim shot through the heart with a 32 automatic from close up? I thought you didn't know anything about the murder. Had to be that way. Why? You call yourself a detective. You don't even see that the pattern for all these murders was the same. Tim was the only one who expected it, and that saved his life. Ballistics proved that no two murders were committed with the same gun. Well, I suppose you think there couldn't be an answer to that. Never mind what I think. Just turn over what evidence you have to the proper authorities, or I'll sweat it out of you. No dice, Pete. I'm going to conduct this investigation in my own way. All right, if you want to make it tough on yourself, go ahead. There's uh, nothing like a good old habeas corpus to spring a guy out of jail. I don't know why I even bothered to get you out. Oh, Angel, look, I told you I was just putting on an act to fool Rafferty. You said that before. Did I? Why, Dilly Smith must really be in the chips. It costs dough to live in a place like this. I can't put my finger on anything definite, but there's something about that man that didn't seem to ring quite true. Yeah, I know what you mean. Let's go talk to the doorman. Morning. Oh, good morning, sir. Special investigator. Oh, you got the wrong man. I swear he has. I never slipped those crooked eyes in the game. No, the uh, FBI is handling that investigation, I think. I'm in the market to buy some information. Oh, you come to the right market, sir. You put it in the black market. <laughs> Selling information is what I is most fond of. What can you tell me about Dillingham Smith? 
Uh, uh, he and his wife moved in a short time back, uh, but I hear they just oozing in money. Mrs. Smith a brunette? No, sir. You never see a blonde like that lady. Why, she's shining in the dark. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, she sent a truck to the railroad two, three days ago, and I ain't seen around no more. Mike, there he is. Call your cab, sir? No, thanks. I'll walk. I'm going to tail him. Call Will Gentry and ask him to bring a fingerprint man over. See if he can find a print to match anything found in Tim's apartment. Hello, Will. This is Phyllis. Mike wants you to do him a big favor. <laughs> no, he's not in jail again. Not yet. He needs a check on some fingerprints without going through regular police channels. I'll meet you here at the El Montalvo Apartments. I'm terribly sorry. Uh, can't you walk without tripping over your feet? Oh, I'm really awfully sorry. It's very clumsy of me. I... This ain't a stick of peppermint candy you feel in your back. Don't tell me. Let me guess. Funny man, huh? I've got a gag that'll kill you. Yeah, I see what you mean. You get in the front seat, pal. This is your party. Well, uh, now that we're all nice and cozy, how's about letting me in on what this is all about? Don't be inquisitive. Stay happy as long as you can. <laughs> Things a card. He's always handing me a laugh. <laughs> Very funny. That's what I like. Murder with a smile. Okay, chum. Let's get down to business. Tim Rourke popped off about some affidavits. Maybe they don't mean nothing to Hank Brenner, but he wants to see them. Sorry. Fresh out of affidavits. That ain't the only thing you'll be out of. Hank said to treat you nice if you play ball. If not, we was to use our own judgment. I don't suppose it'll do any good to tell you I don't know anything about the affidavits you're talking about. That's right. It's the affidavits or else. Look, I can't deliver something I haven't got. It's not going to do you any good to bump me off. Who said anything about bumping you off? We're only taking you down to see Brenner. He wants to talk to you. See if you can start the engine. It looks like we'll have to thumb our way back to town. That's right. You're getting close to something. Where have you been? A couple of Brenner's friends picked me up. We couldn't get along, so I walked home. What do you mean I'm getting close to something? Well, the fingerprints of the woman who claims to be Mrs. Dillingham Smith are the same as the fingerprints of the woman who ransacked Tim's apartment. Huh. 
Now, tell me, why should Dilly Smith be writing letters to Walter Bronson, managing editor of The Courier? I don't know. It's got me stuck. Well, it's got me going around in circles. There's too many blondes in this case. I'm having blonde nightmares. Hope I never see another blonde as long as I live. May I have that in writing? With options. <laughs> Say, uh, Gentry, you will be sure Tim's well guarded, won't you? Brenner and the gambling syndicate are sort of concerned about those affidavits he popped off about. They might try to get to him. Don't worry, I'll see that they don't. Those boys are plenty tough, I know. Now, let me see. We've got a line on the woman who searched Tim's apartment. Did that happen before or after he was shot? Oh, I don't know. There's no way of telling. She ties in with Dilly Smith. Dilly Smith writes a letter to Bronson. That ought to add up to something. And don't forget, Mrs. Bronson is a blonde. So was Madge Rankin, the woman who was murdered to keep her from talking. Dilly ties in there, too. Dilly gets around. Plenty. <laughs> well, I'm putting a tail on him, Will. I can't be everywhere at once, and I can't work with Pete Rafferty. I wish you two boys would try to get along and stop needling each other. What would I do for entertainment? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Minerva. That's my favorite heart trap. Don't give me that line, my chain. I'm no whistle stop. Um, have you seen Timothy? Yeah. He's still unconscious. I say he has a chance. Is Bronson in? No, he hasn't come in yet this morning. Look, Minerva, I'm going to ask you to do a big favor for me. I want you to listen in on his telephone conversations for a day or so. That's out of the question. I never did anything like that in my life. You want to find out who it was shot Tim, don't you? Of course. But surely you don't think... I'm not accusing anyone, but I'm just not overlooking any angles. Good morning, Mr. Bronson. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Bronson. Don't bother me. I'm busy. I said I'm busy. So am I. Why did you object to Rooks following through on his expose of the gambling situation? I fail to see how the editorial policy of this paper is any of your business. The person who shot Rourke didn't like that stuff either. Are you intimating... I'm intimating nothing. I'm stating facts. Did you, uh, get to Rourke's apartment before or after he was shot? I did not go to Rourke's apartment at all. You started for that. I changed my mind. I decided to see him the following morning. Did you find any affidavits among the papers in his desk? I've explained all this to your police department, and Rafferty has all the papers from Rourke's desk. Now get out before I have you thrown out. This letter was among the household bills, and I opened it. We'll talk about that later. Looks like you had a little accident. Well, I... I told you to get out of here. Must I have you thrown out? That's your no excitement's bad for your blood pressure? Who was that? I don't know. Who's the blonde? This is Bronson. Did you enjoy your visit? It was worthwhile. Don't forget about the phone calls, Minerva. I have a hunch something's going to pop before long. Being a lady, I can't tell you just exactly what is going to pop at this moment. Keep your chin up. Remember, this is for Tim. Play along with me. Okay, Mike. You wanted to see me? What do you mean, letting people walk in and out of my private office? This is on Grand Central Station? He followed you in, and there was nothing I could do about it. Would it be expecting too much to ask you who he is? Michael Shane, private detective. A private detective? I understand Timothy Rock sent for him just before he was shot. Will that be all? Yes, you may go. So that's why he was snooping around here, trying to worry me. These private detectives are all a bunch of phonies. Yes, Mr. Bronson. Get me Crestview 64728. Yes, sir. talking. Just a moment, please. Mr. Bronson calling. Hello. Hello, Brenner. Uh, Bronson talking. 
Michael Shane, a private detective, is trying to blackmail me for 25000 Yeah? Play along with them. I know how to handle those babies. All right. All right, I'll do as you say. You've gotten me into a fine mess. I can't afford a scandal. Miss Higgins, uh, run an ad in the personal column of today's paper. Just the two words. Yes, Colt. Yes, Colt. Yes, Walter Bronson speaking. If you're interested in buying a 32 Colt automatic, serial number 421893, before the police run a ballistic test, listen carefully. I won't repeat, and don't bother to have the call traced. I'm calling from a public phone booth. I came to apologize for last night. Skip it. Come on in and sit down. I can only stay a minute. You have a cup of coffee? No, thanks. You know, Mike Shane, he must be quite a guy. Oh, he is. And in my opinion, he's the best detective in the world. <laughs> well, he's not a nice playmate if you have a guilty conscience. You better not try any two-timing. Don't worry, I won't. By the way, I'm not familiar with this town. Could you recommend a good beauty shop? Well, I always go to Madame Renee. I'll give you her card. I've always been satisfied with her work. Thanks a million. Have they any line on who might have killed Madge? Not that I know of. They can't seem to find a motive for the murder. Maybe she stepped out with some other woman's husband. Those things happen. That man, Dilly Smith, said he had trouble with his wife. Do you suppose? Oh, I don't think so. Dilly wasn't interested in Madge. I saw Bronson leave. Did you get anything? I don't like doing this sort of thing. It's like peeking through a keyhole. Oh, so Bronson thinks I'm the one who's trying to blackmail him. Well, for a while, Michael Shane, I had my doubts about you, too. Oh, everyone has his doubts about me now and then, even Phyllis. <laughs> Dilly Smith has a 32 Colt automatic to sell. Get me Chief of Police Will Gentry on the phone, will you? Chief of Police Gentry, please. Michael Shane calling. Hello. Just a moment. Hello, Will. We can start to roll. Pick up Dilly Smith and turn him over to Pete Rafferty's department. Have him check the serial number and run a ballistics test on the gun they'll find on him. Check it against a the slug they took out of Tim. Okay, Mike. But how about breaking down? Tell me what this is all about. Now, it's just as well you don't know too much at the moment. Give me Pete Rafferty, will you? Okay. Switch his call over to Rafferty. Shane burns me up more than anyone I know. I'd give a thousand dollars if I could get him in a spot he couldn't wiggle out of. Hello, Rafferty speaking. Hello, Rafferty. I got a hot tip for you. That private eye, Mike Shane, is on his way to the 300 block on Mariposa. He's up to no good. If you're smart, you'll put a prowl car on his tail. Who's speaking? Hello. 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 Come on. 
I would certainly never make a good detective. I'm too sane. Oh, you don't have to be crazy, but it helps a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Minerva. You did your good deed for the day. These directions are very clear. Slowing up. Shoot at me, didn't you? Sure, I saw him, but I still don't get it. I was driving peacefully along, and he deliberately ran me into the curb. If you were so peaceful, what were you doing with those two thugs in the back of your car? Yeah, how about that? Well, Shane was trying to blackmail me. I, I had them along for protection. Oh, well, that's different. Well, now we're getting somewhere. Shane, it looks like you finally stuck your neck out. Don't you think we better talk this over down at headquarters? And maybe you think we won't? <laughs> You fellas drive straight to headquarters, and I'll tell you. Shane, can't we talk this over privately? I'll get you the money. We'll talk for the record. You and your pals are in this thing up to your neck. You heard what Rafferty said. Let's get going. Let's have it. Start talking. Let's talk for the record. All right, any way you like. We always try to be obliging. <laughs> hey, get a stenographer. I understand some of your men picked up a fellow named Dilly Smith. They did? I mean, what if they did? Well, he had a gun on him. Might be interesting to know the results of the test they ran off. Ballistics. They, they found a gun on a guy named Dilly Smith. Give me a report on that test. I don't know how you know so much about what goes on in my department. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how you guessed it, Shane, but Rourke was shot with that gun. I'm always jumping too ahead of you, Pete. You ought to know that by this time. Have a peanut, Bill. What do you got to say about this, Bronson? About what? About Rourke being shot with a gun registered in your name. Why? I'll bet you tried to double-cross your accomplice, Dilly Smith. And he phoned in a tip about you. Somebody phoned in a tip? Well, why do you suppose I was on your tail? Well, I thought it was because you liked me. and want to see me get hurt. Hey, yo, uh, Pete, would you send somebody out for some more peanuts? Yeah. If you'd like it soaked in poison.
mean, you're in a tough spot. You better tell the truth and not try to cover up for anybody. You knew that gun was red hot. Now tell us how it came to be in your possession. Okay, I'll tell you the truth. I found that gun outside the apartment where the reporter was shot Tuesday night. I saw you drop it, Mr. Bronson, when you came out the side entrance with that blonde dame and got in your car. That's an outrageous lie. Shut up, Bronson. Go ahead. Well, I picked up the gun and took the license number of the car. I didn't know what it was all about until I read in the papers the next day that the reporter had been shot. So you decided to keep the gun and blackmail Mr. Bronson, huh? That's right. Oh, I know I can do a stretch for that, but it's better than being mixed up in a murder rap. And, uh... How does Mr. Shane figure in all this? Him? I've never seen him before. The man's obviously trying to protect Shane for some reason. I was not near Rock's apartment. You started for there, and in no very friendly frame of mind. I checked the time you left the office. You didn't get home until quite late. Must I account for every minute of my time? Might not be a bad idea. Especially in view of the fact that Mrs. Bronson showed such a friendly interest in Tim. I will not submit to having my wife insulted in this manner. And I'll hold you responsible if you allow it to proceed. Mrs. Bronson is a blonde. And a very attractive blonde was seen going in the side entrance to Tim's apartment. Does that prove anything? Not necessarily. Why don't you ask Mrs. Bronson to prove that her fingerprints don't match those of the woman who had a drink with Tim the night he was shot? She's my wife. I, I wanted to protect her. You mean you found your wife in Rourke's apartment? Yes. I was very angry with Rourke over the story. He sneaked into the paper without my okay. There was no one in the lobby when I arrived. I knew the number of the apartment, so I went right up. What are you doing here? What's happened? I didn't do it, Walter. I swear I didn't do it. Well, why are you here? I liked him. I wanted to persuade him to give up that foolish crusade and keep his job with you. Who shot him? I don't know. I started into the kitchen and was struck a blow on the head that knocked me unconscious. And then I found him like this. <laughs> We've got to get out of here. situation and I couldn't think clearly. I didn't know whether Rourke was alive or dead. My only thought was to get her out of there without being seen. I didn't dare risk taking her through the lobby, so we slipped out the side entrance. I didn't know that she'd taken my pistol with her until we returned home. Then she discovered that it had disappeared from her purse. Did you believe her story? Why, certainly. You mean you wanted to believe it? You were afraid she was the blonde that committed those other murders. That isn't true. I'm interested in the gambling syndicate, but I wouldn't countenance murder. What about your plan to have me bumped off? That was Brenner's idea. Well, you see, Pete, we opened up the laundry bag and found a lot of dirty linen. Now, what about that blonde wife of yours? Well, what about her? She's the woman who searched Tim's apartment. Well, that's news to me. Maybe she was two-timing me, and he had some letters she wanted back. Maybe that's why you were hanging around the apartment the night you say you saw Bronson drop Look, I don't know what she's been doing. She walked out on me four days ago. If you don't believe me, check with my apartment. I have. Well, hello, Angel. Any luck? Well, I guess we've got this case in the bag. I'll have them pick up Mrs. Bronson. She was the last one to see Rourke alive. And she had the pistol with her. Arrest these two men. Bronson was an accomplice, or an accessory after the fact. Smith was a material witness and a confessed blackmailer. <laughs> well, the newspaper boys have been clamoring for a story. I'll give them a story so hot it'll make their hair curl. <laughs> uh, you know, Pete, if I were you, I don't believe I'd break that story just yet. Huh? Why not? Hey, are you trying to fix it so you get a payoff out of this? Oh. Pete, you hurt me. You're so suspicious. Well, I've got a right to be suspicious. I would have dug up all this stuff myself. Of course you would have. It's just that I think there's one more angle we might check into. 
Well, all right. I'll go along with you. But don't try to make a monkey out of me. What? Share my peanuts? Oh. Hello, Mike. Oh, I see you brought a chaperone. Yeah, a couple of them. Well, what do we do now? Play games? No, Helen. We're all through playing games. What did you mean by that, Crack? Murder isn't a game. We want the blonde who murdered three men, Madge Rankin, and shot Tim Rourke. Do I look like a blonde? Not now. But you gave Phyllis the name of the hairdresser who dyed your hair from blonde to brunette when things got too hot for you. Is it, is it a crime for a woman to have her hair dyed? I thought you were a regular guy, Mike. I didn't think you'd try to pull a dirty frame like this. You left a fingerprint on the card you gave Phyllis. It matched that of the woman who searched Tim's apartment. And, by the way, also that of Mrs. Dilly Smith. Dilly's down at headquarters now, and he's being very cooperative. None of that proves that I committed any murders. I've been wanting to do that for a long time, ever since the other night. You know, if you ever get a cauliflower ear, don't look to me for sympathy. Don't worry, I won't. I dish them out. I don't take them. Oh, this is for you, Petey. Well, I guess we got the murder weapon all right. All right, wise guy. Run a ballistic on that gun. It hasn't been fired in years. You thought you were pretty smart when you threw away the old barrel after each murder and slipped in a new one. But you didn't know that a gun leaves a distinctive mark on the ejected shell as well as on the bullet. You should have picked up your empty shells. <laughs> Take it easy. Take it easy. She's not going to get away. You got a man out and back. You know, I can understand the rest of it, but why'd she murder Madge Rankin? I don't know. Maybe she got wise to the setup and threatened to blow the lid off if they didn't cut her in. You're right, Shane. She knew too much. You might have gotten away with it, too, if you hadn't slept a new barrel in Bronson's gun and tried for blackmail. It was Dilly's idea. Should have got rid of him, too. Well, I hope this winds it up. I'm getting dizzy. Come on. Sure good to see you with your eyes open again, Tim. Oh, there's a lot of life left in the old hulk. I must ask you to leave. You're only supposed to stay a minute. Okay, beautiful. We'll stick around town for a while, Tim. Drop in now and then. See you. Hey, Tim, notice anything strange about Mike? No, what? This is the first time he ever got through a case without being laid out like a rug. Listen, let me tell you one thing. Nobody lays Mike Shane out like a rug. Give me the admission desk. Send another bet up to room 216. 